Hey Jaywalkers, I'm calling this message not so fast. When we left off, we had the religious leaders enraged and trying to kill the disciples because they were jealous of them. Jealousy is a very real and crazy thing that can cause you to do things that are very terrible. And we see that happening in Acts chapter 5. So let's pick up in verse 34. It says, But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. There's the word of God from today that we want to take a look at. And I want to kind of talk about what I mean by calling this message not so fast. Sometimes we're very quick to judge people. And in this case, the Pharisees were very quick to judge the apostles they were very quick to judge Jesus and to say, er, don't want anything to do with him. Don't want anything to do with you guys. In fact, you're kind of stealing what we want for ourselves. I hate you. I want to make you look bad. I want to stop you from doing what it is that you're doing. And they threw him in prison and all these things happened as a result of this. But then there's a man when they're just about to probably kill them that steps up and his name is Gamaliel. He, he speaks up and he's well-respected, the Bible says. He's an honorable teacher. And he actually sent the disciples, the apostles out of the room to talk to these men. He, another kind of, that's, that was a good thing for him to do, I think, to kind of not do this in front of them, but to address the rest of the people without them being there. Sort of a respectable thing. And he tells them, men of Israel, take care what you're about to do with these men. So he says, slow down. Slow down. Not so fast. He gave two examples next of people who rose up, got killed, and then their followers were scattered. See, what these people didn't like is they didn't like that they were gaining a following. See, these people had worked their whole lives to gain a following. They weren't going to just lose it to these bunch of scrub, non-educated people who just show up and start talking about this guy who died, Jesus. They're mad about this. It's stepping on their toes. And so they're going to put a stop to it. But Gamaliel says, slow down. You don't have to do that right now. Because this, we've seen this kind of thing before. Somebody rises up, people start following him, and then he dies. And then he's gone. It stays around for a minute, and then it just kind of fades. On to the next thing, right? How quick are people on to the next thing these days? Same thing then. It's going to be on to the next thing. And he gives a couple examples of that happening with a man named Theudas and another man named Judas the Galilean. And... After a while, no big deal anymore. It's gone. They're scattered. You don't have anything to worry about. And so Gamaliel says, that's going to happen again. Maybe. Right? What he actually says is, if 
this plan is of man, it will fail. And I just want to step back and take that as a big picture statement for a moment because that's true in many circumstances. If the plans that you're devising for your life are only your plans, they're going to fail. If you're looking around and saying, how can I manipulate this situation to work in my benefit? How can I figure out a way to get ahead? And I'm doing that at the expense of somebody else like these men were. They were trying to push themselves ahead by pushing down the apostles. If that's the goal, it's going to fail. If this plan is of man, it will fail. But if it's of God, you will not be able to stop it. So if this is God's plan, if this is what he wants to do, if this is something that's real, you're not going to be able to stop it. It's going to happen. So be careful is what Gamaliel is saying. He's saying, don't go too fast. You might actually find yourself opposing the work of God when you judge something too quickly. And I want to admit that in my life, I have probably judged someone too quickly before. I've probably done it a lot. In fact, most studies say that we make up our opinion about somebody in the first like 30 seconds of meeting them or the first minute of hearing them talk. So we as a people are very quick to judge people. I don't like how they look. I don't like how they talk. I don't like what they have to say. I don't like anything about them. And we kind of look down our nose at them, either thinking that we're better than them or we don't like them because they're doing better than us. And we kind of compare and we kind of judge. Here's what I know about myself. I want people who I, dese who I deem worthy of deserving punishment to get it right now. I want them to get it right now. And we live in a culture that we can blast people right now. People do that all the time on social media. And it's hurtful and it's hateful. You see these types of things. It hurts people's feelings. People end up crying over this. It breaks people's hearts. And people, when they do that, don't always consider what it might do to somebody else. But they maybe have had that same thing done to them. Where somebody's judged you quickly. They've said, that person doesn't deserve to be treated fairly or right or kindly. And they blast you. Maybe it's from something you post. Maybe it's from something you say. And that's not right. But it is a very real thing that people do. The other thing is that we're often wrong about people. So we make these snap judgments right away. Not so fast. Because sometimes the motivation that we think a person has is actually not their motivation. Sometimes the way that they appear to us right at the beginning isn't actually who they are. And we're just way off base. You ever been wrong about somebody before? You thought they were a jerk and they ended up being a nice person and you're the one that was kind of wrong? You judged them too quickly. We do that all the time. And that's what Gamaliel is warning these Israelites of. He's saying, don't judge this situation, these people too quickly. If they're, if they're doing it for the wrong reasons, it'll reveal itself. But if they're not, you might end up on the wrong side. And then you'll look like a dummy who didn't know what you were talking about. And he's trying to spare them that to an extent. So here's what I've also learned over time. So how do I avoid doing that? I slow down, right? I slow down. I don't write something back right away. I don't respond to something somebody says immediately because my immediate response is my flesh response. It's the one that, man, I got a jab and I wanna, I'm ready to throw it. But that's not what I'm called to do as a Christian. The Bible tells me in the book of James to be slow to speak. Being slow to speak means think about it first. 
You don't have to be a keyboard warrior who immediately after reading or seeing something somebody says or posts that you write back the thing that just is going to get them. I saw somebody making fun of a person the other day because of their appearance on a TikTok thing. And it made me feel bad for that person because they can't help what they look like. And we're so quick to judge them and to blast them. And it's hurtful. And it makes people feel bad about themselves. And feel bad about everybody. And not like themselves or other people. Then they're not open to hearing the truth about themselves or about God. So that's what's going on. Um, what I've learned though is to slow down and to let time reveal it, to let people show themselves. I don't have to destroy them. Time will reveal their intentions. If they're in fact evil in their motives, then time will show that. And I will have passed the test of not making myself judge and jury of the situation. If I'm the one who is off, then I save myself the embarrassment of being wrong. If I keep myself quiet and don't say anything, and I don't take a stance that ends up being wrong, nobody knows that I thought that for a minute. That's something that's broken in me that I've got to work on. This judginess, this quick to make a rash decision about something. I need to slow down. I need to slow myself down. Just like Gamaliel was trying to slow these people down. Now, I do have one complaint about Gamaliel. Because it seems like I'm like praising what he did here. I'm like, oh, Gamaliel, he slowed everybody down. Great job, buddy. Like, way to tell him to not judge people too quickly. But he's not doing this with a person. Gamaliel is doing this with God himself. With Jesus. And... Jesus has already given him all the evidence that he needs to make a judgment about Jesus. And he was avoiding doing so. In other words, Gamaliel is saying something about the apostles. He's saying, just wait and see if they die off. But the reason why he thinks they're going to die off or just kind of scatter or just kind of give up in this quest of spreading the word of Jesus is because he doesn't believe that Jesus is God. And he already has enough evidence to make that determination. He's already been able to see that Jesus has risen from the dead. He's already been able to see the boldness of the disciples and the miracles that were following Jesus and his followers. He was, in fact, opposing God. Ironically, He's warning these people that if they're not careful, they might be opposing God while he's opposing God because he's saying Jesus is just like these other men who died and passed away and then all of their stuff just kind of faded. That's not, that's not Jesus. That's not who he is. The Bible just went to tell us if it's the plan of man, it will fail. This one was not the plan of man. It was the plan of God. So Gamaliel or nobody else would be able to stop it and may in fact find themselves opposing it. So that's the one complaint that I have about Gamaliel. I'm with him if he's talking about people. If you're saying, be careful when it comes to judging people. Judge not lest you be judged. Be careful about that speck in someone's eye when you got a log in yours. By the way, the Bible doesn't tell us not to judge it tells us not to judge non-believers. When it talks about other believers, Christians, we're supposed to speak the truth to them. We're supposed to do it in love, but we're supposed to speak the truth. So this is the situation that we're dealing with right here. Gamaliel is trying to tell people, hey, slow down. Don't just make these quick, rash judgments about the apostles and what they're doing and who they are. Slow down, because you might be wrong about them. But he also is 
putting that same judgment or I guess lack of judgment on Jesus. And he's already received the evidence to make a conclusion about Jesus. And so have you, by the way. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you haven't heard the story about who Jesus was and what he did. Let me tell you. Jesus lived the perfect sinless life. He was God in the flesh. You can read about that in John chapter 1. It says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father full of grace and truth. We saw grace through Jesus. We saw truth through Jesus. We saw the word of God become flesh, live a perfect sinless life, and then die the death that we deserve on a cross. But when he died, he didn't stay dead. He was in a grave for three days and then on his own power and his own authority because of his own sinless nature, he rose from the grave and came back and offered to us the life that he now had and the death that he overcame in exchange for our sin, in exchange for our mistakes. So he says, I'll take those on myself. I already did on the cross. That's why I took that punishment. So you don't have to. And that's the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, Gamaliel had been hearing that. And instead of responding to that in a way that was like repentance and turning to Jesus and giving his life to him like so many in this time are, he kicks the can down the road. He says, we'll see about that. And I feel like there's a lot of people who might be doing that. Just saying, I'll decide later about Jesus. I want to do what I want to do right now. Let's see. Let's see what, what comes of this. Well, you're not guaranteed or promised tomorrow. And if you die separate from Jesus without making that decision, then you'll be separated from him for eternity. And since none of us knows when that time is for us, we can't wait to make that decision. We're supposed to not so fast when it comes to judging people. But as soon as you hear the truth about who Jesus is and what he's done, you need to respond to it. You need to make a decision on him. So my final takeaway is not so fast when it comes to judging men and stop waiting to make a decision for Jesus. See, the apostles made their decision. This was their decision. They took the advice of Gamaliel. They don't end up trying to kill them. They're like, well, just wait. We'll see what happens. Just like he said, that's good advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they beat them. This was not like an easy, normal beating. This would have been the same kind of beating that Jesus got before he went on to the, to the cross. The 39 lashes, ripping skin from flesh and bone and all of those terrible things that this is this is a beatdown painful scar leaving beatdown and it says they charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go this is not the first time that's happened they've done it before let's see what they do this time then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus so they had changed so much that they just got the beat down of their lives. They just got thrown in prison twice. And then when they get out, they're like, thank you, God, that we got to suffer like you did. These guys have made their decision. They are going to follow Jesus and they're gonna be his representatives. And then we see what happens next. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. They wanted people to know Jesus is this Messiah that was promised to Israel. He's the one who came to set us free from sin and death. He didn't come just to set us free from Rome or occupation and to restore us to, to some position of rule on the earth. He came to change everything, to forgive us of sins, to make us new, and to restore right relationship with God. That's what we get to respond to. That's what they had already responded to. And that's my one complaint about Gamaliel. He's wise. He's a great teacher. Awesome. But he got that one wrong. He's right about slowing down when it comes to people. But when it comes to Jesus, 
you have all the evidence that you need to make a decision for him. Will you do it? Or will you be opposing God? Will you be kicking the can down the road and then risking everything, risking eternity? You don't need any more evidence on Jesus. He's given you all you need in the word of God and in his testimony and in the testimony of the eyewitnesses and the people who knew him. So if you want to take a step of faith today and trust him with your life, then let's do it. And the Holy Spirit will help you and lead you and guide you and teach you how not to judge others. To slow down and stop jumping to conclusions about people. It makes us look bad and it makes others feel bad. So let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, thank you so much for who you are. I'm a sinner. I'm separated from you, God, because I've chosen myself. I've lived a life of jealousy and anger. I've judged people. And I know that your word says that that means I've brought judgment on myself. But God, I'm sorry for all those things. I believe that Jesus did die on that cross for my sins and that he rose from the dead. And today I want to give him my life. I want to make him my Lord and my Savior. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. Help me to be more like Jesus. Send your spirit to show me how to do that. God, and I thank you for loving me enough to come down to this earth for me so that I can know you. I choose you today. And I give you license to change my heart and my life. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for being here today. Uh, we do meet every Tuesday from 6 till 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about all kinds of things related to the Bible. And I'd love to see you there. If you can make it, we'll see you on Tuesday's Zoom. 739-6681-5494. Love to see you there. Have a great week, jaywalkers, and we'll talk to you real soon. Slow down, not so fast, except when it comes to God. Make a decision about him right now. Love you. Bye.